Okay, next topic is chest trauma, and we're going to start off with rib fractures. Rib fractures for test purposes, we got to remember the elderly patient that gets the rib fractures. Now, what kind of elderly patient can be predisposed to rib fractures? Osteoporotic patients, right? But other patients that can get rib fractures are elite athletes. <clears throat> it can happen secondary to cancer. It can happen secondary to infection. So um, how are these patients going to present? They're going to present with pain with breathing or pain on movement. And a lot of times you're going to get a grating noise that's going to happen um, on movement or on breathing. And what we have to be wary of is the elderly patients. Because in elderly patients, the progression of pain can lead to hypoventilation, which can lead to atelectasis and ultimately lead to pneumonia. So we have to treat elderly patients with intercostal nerve block. And young patients, we're simply going to observe them and give them analgesics slash painkillers, okay? Next topic is traumatic rupture of the trachea or bronchus. What do we want to remember a traumatic rupture of the trachea or bronchus? Pneumomediastinum. And that's subcutaneous emphysema in the upper chest and the lower neck. And this is usually going to happen after a high-speed car accident on the test. And the chest x-ray is actually going to show air in the tissues. And how are we going to identify the lesion and secure the airway beyond the lesion? We're going to actually do a fiber optic bronchoscopy. This is how we are going to identify the lesion and this is how we're going to secure the airway beyond the lesion. And we're going to repair them with surgical repair. Next question, fail, flail chest. Flail chest is a high yield topic on the exam. And it's actually, it actually occurs with multiple rib fractures. And you get something called, called paradoxical breathing. And what paradoxical breathing means is that on inspiration, the chest wall is, wall is actually going to cave in. And on expiration, it's actually going to bulge out. Okay, and that's called paradoxical breathing. But what we have to remember on flail chest, our underlying problem is actually the pulmonary contusion that occurs. Now, what we want to remember is that the contused lung here on flail chest, that's our underlying problem, is very sensitive to fluid overload, okay? So our first line treatment is actually fluid rest restriction. And after we do fluid restriction, what are we going to do? We're going to use colloids, okay? And what are our colloids? Either plasma or albumin, okay? We're not going to use crystalloids such as regular IV fluids, we're going to use colloids, okay? And we're going to use diuretics. So how are we going to treat flail chest? First of all, how are we going to recognize it? We're going to recognize it, a patient that comes in with multiple rib, rib fractures with this paradoxical breathing. That means on inspiration, the chest wall is going to cave in, and on expiration, it's going to bulge out. And our underlying problem we've got to worry about is the pulmonary contusion, which we're going to go into in a second. And we're going to restrict fluid, and we're going to use diuretics, and because the contused lung is very sensitive to fluid, alt, uh, fluid overload, we're going to actually use colloids, such as plasma, and we are going to avoid using crystalloids, such as regular IV fluid. Our next topic is pulmonary contusion. This is really easy to recognize on the test because the chest x-ray, if they show us a CXR, it's actually going to show a white out appearance, okay? And this is going to happen secondary to chest trauma just like myocardial contusion, but what do I want you to look for? I want you to look for white out on the chest x-ray. And it can appear a lot of times 48 hours later, so we have to monitor these patients, okay? A lot of times this is the hidden injury, and the treatment is the same thing as it is for flail chest. So it's pretty easy to remember the treatment of pulmonary contusion because it's the same thing right here as we did for flail chest. Fluid restriction, colloids rather than crystalloids, diuretics, and we're going to monitor and intubate these patients with PEEP. And it makes sense because we said, what is our underlying pro problem we got to watch out for in flail chest? The pulmonary contusion, right? So remember, it can be a hidden injury, and it's going to present as a white out on the chest x-ray, and up to 50% are asymptomatic. Next, next topic myocardial contusion this is another gimme like i said pulmonary contusion is going to happen after a car accident or some type of chest trauma and you're going to look for this white out right 
and it can be a hidden injury and we're going to treat it with this fluid restriction, colloids, diuretics, monitor blood gases, intubate patients with PEEP. Myocardial contusion, it's going to happen secondary to a blunt myocardial injury. So it's going to be a bruise of the heart. Remember these patients can actually show up with a bruised chest, okay? And it's difficult to diagnose. But what do I want you to look for in the stem of the question? I want you to see, look for a patient that had some type of chest trauma, usually can come in like after a car accident, and they're gonna have these EKG findings, such as VTAC, or some type of arrhythmia with the chest trauma, okay? After a blunt chest trauma. So it's gonna be EKG findings that are seen after sternal or blunt chest trauma. What do we have to do in these patients? We must monitor the EKG, um, the EKG is actually going to detect it, right? Because we're going to look for some type of arrhythmia. And we're going to look for uh, our troponins or what's specific. And it, troponins and EKG should always be ordered anytime we have a sternal fracture, okay? And ST segment changes are our most common finding in myocardial contusion. So what is our treatment? Our treatment's actually going to be focused on the complications. So what are the complications? EKG complications such as VTAC or any type of arrhythmia. This is what we're going to actually be trying to treat. We're going to try to treat the underlying arrhythmia, whatever the EKGs find, okay? So all patients should be admitted to the ICU for observation and cardiac monitoring, okay? So our treatment involves whatever our underlying EKG finding shows. So pulmonary contusion, something like a car accident, some type of chest trauma with a whiteout. Right, flail chest underlying problem is the pulmonary contusion, and myocardial contusion is after blunt abdominal trauma, a bruise on the chest we may see with some type of EKG findings, and our treatment is going to be treating whatever these this EKG finding shows. And traumatic rupture of the aorta is pretty high yield because it's a hidden injury. Okay, these patients are usually um, totally asymptomatic, and a common way they ask this is. Um, a deceleration injury such as a fall from a grave height or a person being ejected from a car in a motor vehicle crash okay so what we're going to do first we're going to do a chest x-ray and based on the chest x-ray we want to see if there's a widened mediastinum if there's no widened mediastinum we're going to go to transesophageal echo or spiral CT so first step CXR we're going to look for a widened mediastinum. No widened mediastinum, transesophageal echo, or spiral CT. If there is a widened mediastinum, we're going straight to aortogram, and we're going to go to surgical repair. So first, on traumatic rupture of the aorta, look for deceleration injuries, such as a fall from a great height, or per, uh, patient being ejected from a car in a motor vehicle crash. Chest x-ray, no widened, widened mediastinum. We're going to do transesophageal echo, or spiral CT. If it's positive, straight to surgical repair. If there is a widened mediastinum, we're going to go to aortogram, and based on the aortogram, we're going to go to surgical repair. Um, aortogram can also be indicated if non-invasive studies are inconclusive. And basically, we're going to look for fractures in chest bones that are really hard to break. And that can be a clue on the exam for traumatic rupture of the aorta as well. Okay, so I think we got these down. Rib fracture, remember, look out for the elderly. Elderly patients, we're going to do inter intercostal nerve, nerve block. And young patients, we're just doing observation analgy 6. Traumatic rupture of the aorta, we're going to look for the pneumomediastinum on chest x-ray. We're going to identify with fiber, fiber optic bronchoscopy and surgical repair. Flail chest, we're going to look for multiple rib fractures with a paradoxical breathing. We're going to look for the underlying pulmonary contusion, which is a whiteout on the chest x-ray. And we're going to treat with fluid restriction, colloids, which is plasma or albumin, not crystalloids, which is IV fluids, uh, diuretics, and we're going to monitor blood gases and innovate patients with PEEP. Pulmonary contusion, same thing. Fluid restriction, colloids, diuretics, monitor blood gases and innovate patients with PEEP. Myocardial contusion, chest trauma, it's going to happen secondary to blunt um, chest trauma and it's just difficult to diagnose but if we see EKG findings after the blunt chest trauma we think in myocardial contusion and our main thing we want to do to treat these patients is whatever this EKG finding is we want to treat that and traumatic rupture of the aorta think a fall from a great height which is commonly asked or a deceleration injury such as being ejected from a car in a motor vehicle accident look at the chest x-ray we're going to look for a wide mediastinum if no wide mediastinum echo or spiral CT if a wide mediastinum 
aortogram, and if, um, if aortogram is positive, we go to surgical repair.